Hey there, team! Chemistry coach coming at you! Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> One of my favorite shirts from students. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be looking at, uh, we're going to be uh, delving into the realm of kinetics. Um, but I, you know, I want to do a quick introduction to kinetics, but I like to talk about kinetics in the context of a bigger picture, right? So we as chemists look at chemical reactions, and there's a lot we do in, in first and second semester of just general chemistry, not even talking about organic chemistry and all the other levels. When, when we look at a chemical reaction, there's three fundamental questions that, that personally I like to ask to understand what's happening, right? So there's three main factors or three questions you could ask yourself. Say you're in a laboratory, you have some new chemical reaction, and you want to figure some stuff out about it. Yeah, keeping it real simple. All right. One, probably the first question I would ask is, does the reaction occur, <laughs> right? So if I want to start a business or something like that and manufacture some product to sell, if the reaction doesn't happen, that probably is not the smartest business move, <laughs> right? Makes sense? So does that reaction occur? All right, pretty simple. So if the reaction does occur, then some other questions I'm going to ask myself, maybe as a business person. Well, how fast is the reaction? right? How fast does it occur? So maybe I want to manufacture a product and that reaction actually occurs. Uh, and we're going to talk about spontaneity and all that kind of stuff later on down the road if you've already learned that sort of stuff. And I'll mention the details of each thing in a second. But here's the three basic questions. Does the reaction occur? If it does, how fast is it? Because if it takes, you know, you know, 3.2 million years for that reaction to occur, you know, that, that's a business issue, right? Maybe there's some ways we can speed it up. But, but that's a, a valid question to ask. Right? Does it occur? How fast is it? And then we're going to spend a lot of time in second semester of general chemistry answering the question, how far does the reaction proceed? If it occurs, right, and regardless of how fast the reaction is, how far does it proceed? So in introductory chemistry and first semester of general chemistry, most of the reactions we deal with, if not all of them, we just assume they just go to completion. All the reactants become products. Well, welcome to the real world. Good Mr. Mister song, by the way. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> I'm not going to go Google that one and say, oh, who's Mr. Mister? The 80s were great. So we have this, this thing that happens where a reaction doesn't necessarily proceed to completion, where you have uh, a certain amount of leftover reactants and you have some products. So both of them exist at the same time. There's a term we use for that I'm going to bring up in a second. But those are the three basic questions. Does the reaction occur? If it does, how fast is it? And then how far does it proceed? All right. The way I like to, you know, uh, Mickeyize these is say, okay, instead of does the reaction occur, just say, well, how favorable is the reaction? Simple question. And instead of uh, how fast is it, you know, how fast is the reaction? We just, you know, limit to that how fast, right? How far does the reaction, right? How far? So see the three Fs? favorable, fast, and far, right? So how favorable is it, how fast is it, and how far does it proceed? So these have names we're gonna use for the branches of chemistry. How favorable is a reaction falls under the branch of thermodynamics. So let's write thermodynamics there. Thermodi, they're so long, why are the words so long? You very likely in introductory chemistry or in first semester general chemistry looked at thermochemistry, which is a small portion of this underlying umbrella called thermodynamics. So if we want to answer this question, does a reaction occur or how favorable is it? Boom, thermodynamics is going to answer that question. And there's overlap between all three of these. Second, how fast is it? And that's what we're going to be looking at uh, for this particular a section. How fast is it that falls under the realm of kinetics? So there are a lot of high-level researchers that all they focus on and specialize in is thermodynamics, maybe even a sub-branch within thermodynamics. Some of them, they're kineticists. All they do is look at speeds of reactions because that's kind of important. So I worked on some of that with my PhD in atmospheric chemistry. So we're looking at, hey, is this a, is this a viable reaction that could cause some of these outcomes and produce other chemicals in the atmosphere, right? Well, a, a, a viable question is, well, how fast does that occur? Because if it's a really slow reaction, that might be a reaction we can say, you know what? Yeah, it creates some products we're interested in, but it happens so slow, we can essentially ignore it. See what I'm saying? And if it's super fast, maybe something we didn't think had a big impact, but we then realize it's a super fast reaction. We're like, oh, crud, we got to think about this and put this maybe in some of our models, right? I don't want to get into too much detail of it, but there are people who specialize just in speeds 
of reactions, right, under the branch of kinetics. And then how far does the reaction proceed, right? That's where we have a mixture of products and a mixture of reactants all coexisting at the same time. That is the branch called equilibrium. We're going to spend a lot of time, lots of chapters under equilibrium, where we can actually determine, well, once a reaction proceeds to equilibrium, how much reactants are left, how much products are formed, right? Well, what percentage does a reaction, like we've talked briefly in first semester general chemistry with weak acids and weak bases, maybe they ionize to like a 5% or 2% extent, right? You got 100 molecules and only two out of 100 actually react. Oh my goodness. Um, typically, we just deal with strong species that go to 100% extent and you have just products left in the reactants. But that's a whole bunch of later videos we're going to do. So here's the one we're going to focus on for this next branch that we're looking at, kinetics. So let's take a look at one more board. It's just a quick little intro and look at the two basic areas of kinetics we're going to focus on and maybe a couple terms. Then we'll get into some details in some later videos. See you in a second. All right, two kind of fundamental or basic ways we can view kinetics, and we're going to separate them up into these two basic factors, all right? A macroscopic view versus a microscopic view, right? It's kind of a, the best word people can associate with uh, instead of like nanoscopic or picoscopic. <laughs> we'll go microscopic, okay? So macroscopic is where we're going to focus most of our time in, especially with laboratory, right? What can we see? What can we touch? What can we measure? All right, that's macroscopic, right? I can, I can hold this calculator in my hand. <laughs> it's macroscopic. So in essentially, since we're dealing with kinetics, that's the speeds of reactions. So how can we study and measure those in a laboratory, do calculations, figure out, can, you know, what is the reaction speed, right? And so we have a term we use in kinetics. It's called a reaction rate. So instead of speed, we tend to use the, the verbiage rate, right? So we have to look, and that's going to be the next video. What is a reaction rate? Ooh, right? Like a, a speed down a road, right? You're moving a certain distance over a certain time. So it's a little more complicated variable than you might be used to because we've got two factors, a change in an amount over a change in time, right? So that's macroscopic. And then we're going to look at things like, well, how could we actually measure that in the lab? Can we monitor pH changes, color changes, right? Are there different ways maybe using electrochemistry that we can monitor maybe changes in concentrations over time? Time's easy, right? Start the reaction, measure how much time goes by, yay! But can we monitor the change in the amount of a substance, say the concentration uh, of a solution or of, of a solute, right? How do we monitor that, right? Well, there's lots of different ways you can do that, and we'll study that in the laboratory. Once we got that down and we do kind of the mathematics behind reaction rates, then we're going to focus on the microscopic view where you can't go do this in lab, where we're going to look at things down at an atomic or molecular level. And we want to study specifically reaction mechanisms. Okay, You're going to do this a lot in organic chemistry. But this is kind of the first introduction in general chemistry. We're going to look at the mechanism of reaction. How does this, so maybe we have this overall equation. And then we're gonna, and we, and we can study its reaction rate in lab. But when we now want to know, well, why? Why is that a fast reaction versus why is that a slow reaction? Those kinds of things. So we're gonna look at what's actually happening on a molecular level. So maybe this reaction we're looking at is actually a two or three step process that we can't see with our pathetic human eyeballs. But maybe we can theorize and say, hey, you know what? In actuality. This reactant reacts with this species, forming this species. That species then reacts with a different reactant, forming this new species, which then reacts with this other one to form the ultimate product we're after. So maybe it's an actual three-step process, A, B, and C, and we can combine those equations together. Remember Hess's law, right? Combining all the equations together to get an overall equation. So we could study that, and maybe we can, you know, propose some reaction mechanisms happening on a molecular level that can kind of match the reaction rates we are studying macroscopically. Lab. Right, so there's your intro into kinetics. So if you're ever in doubt and you're going, what's kinetics? Speed, ultimately reaction rates, but you can just say speed. Let's get into details in the next video.